Hello everyone, welcome in Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah with a Saturday vloggy thing. Yes, made it through another work week. How has your week been? Uh, my week has been kind of crazy, but still good, still very good. Um, the position that I had before, I was team lead and I was supporting a supervisor and the team. Now I am just that supervisor and the team lead position isn't getting backfilled yet. So yeah, that's kind of busy. It makes it kind of hectic because I have to do all the team lead stuff myself and do all the supervisor stuff myself, but I'm learning. I'm still cutting my hours down. Yes. And I'm kind of taking advantage of it. I haven't been doing much crochet and stuff. Um, some evenings we've just been going, Hey, let's go take a ride. Cause you know, we have the twuck and it's a hybrid and it's really good on gas. And we go like on slow streets where we can just stay in electric mode, which is kind of fun. And we've just been totally chilling out. Um, this morning, it's a Saturday. I woke up at around eight o'clock. It was raining like crazy. I mean, whoa, it was like st storming and raining. And I got a, the, the, the emergency, you know, danger Will Robinson warning on my phone about flash flooding and all that stuff. So I was like, oh, I'll just go back to sleep. And I did. I was going to get up and do stuff this morning. Did I? No. Is my hair still wet? Yes. Because I finally got up, washed my hair, and uh, got my day started. And what I'm holding in my hand, these are recipe cards from EveryPlate. The EveryPlate, I pay for the, the food subscription myself. Um, I've really enjoyed this meal subscription. They send you all the ingredients. They send you a card that tells you what what is sent for that meal and what you do for it on the back and the order that you should do things in to kind of, you know, get it all together at the same time. And it works. Um, I've never been one to really follow recipes specifically. However, this has given me some ideas that I never would have thought to put together myself, you know, which is what I use recipe books for, cookbooks. I look through them, I get ideas, like, okay, let's put this stuff together. But out of all of these that I've done so far, there's only like two or three repeats in there. Yeah, I've gotten to do just lots of different meals. And the ones that are repeats have been more like, oh, that came up again. Yes, we're doing that again. To get all the ingredients sent to you and stuff is pretty cool. The reason I'm talking about it today is I don't have one for next week. Huh. Yeah. Um, Usually it gets delivered for me on Wednesdays. UPS brings it, you know, the brown truck. And it didn't come. And I was like, what? And the hubby usually deals with tracking packages for me. He, he like, you know, deep dives into it and try to figure out, you know, where things are. And we looked and it got scanned into Doraville, Georgia. And never scanned out. Because that's what happens. Things will scan into a place and they scan out of a place. Even they, if they were only there for five minutes to change trucks or, or whatever. This one never scanned out. And I was like, oh, great. The, the food won't be ha worth having after, you know, because it's got cold packs and stuff in it. But it's not going to last an extra day in this heat. But I got an email notification from every place saying, due to a problem with our courier, shipper, whatever it was, it said, um, your box will not be making it to you. The credit will be on your account. We have applied the credit. It should show up on your account within the next 24 hours. We apologize. Basically, see you next week. The credit was already there. That is excellent customer service. Yeah. Does it bite that I don't have my meal kit for the week? Sure. I can obviously still cook other things, you know, but... They took care of it without me even having to contact them. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with every plate. Some of the, sometimes the, because they try to keep it in six steps or less, sometimes it's like they kind of put things together that shouldn't be together as far as what you do. But the stuff is never difficult. And I don't do, you can have like where you just choose easy peasy recipes or, you know, family friendly. I'm like, give me all the things. Let me choose from all the things because you can go in and change out. You got a bunch of choices for the week. And I do the stuff that requires more steps and stuff because I think it's more interesting. Um, like this one that I just had last week. It was actually quite good. It is 
a broccoli cheddar bisque with garlic bread. And I kind of did my own thing on it a little bit. It was delicious, but I had some carrots left in the fridge that we had purchased that I wanted to use. So I actually added some roasted carrots to this and that was good. And instead of making the, uh, I added more garlic to the broth that then instead of saving some for the garlic bread, I have garlic paste. So I used a little bit of garlic paste, a little bit of granulated garlic and a delicious garlic oil that I purchased at the oil and vinegar store to make my garlic bread that went with it. It was delicious. We ate all of it, but it was great and super easy. And they say prep 10 minutes, ready in 35. Um, yeah, it really can be made that easily, that quickly. And it really gives you ideas, even if you only did it for a few weeks, just to try it out, you would get some interesting recipe ideas. Made um, mushroom risotto once. I had never actually made my own risotto. I just used a mix or whatever. Dude, I made risotto and it was good. Anyway, that's why I'm holding these. I'm trying to decide if I should use my trapper keeper for these or save my trapper keeper for, for crochet patterns or get another trapper keeper. I mean, not like I don't have other binders in the house because I'm like a school supply and office supply junkie. Yeah, it's a problem. But what should I do? Should the trapper keeper be for the recipe cards, which I will put in their own little slidey folders because I like doing that? Or should the trapper keeper be for patterns? Tell me in the comments below, please. Tell me what to do. I get so tired of making decisions because I have to make decisions at work all the time. I'm going to set this down right over here. Pardon me for stepping out of frame. At least I'm not getting yanked out of frame. You know, that's a whole other different thing. Anyway, yes, there was work. There's recipes. It's raining. Ugh, yucky outside. Today, we have to go get the hubby's haircut. I should get my haircut too, but I just don't know what I want to do. I mean, it's getting really long again. See, it's actually quite long, but it's naturally curly. This is not something I do to my hair. Let's be real here. Um, had a great discussion with uh, one of my people at work about her hair. She is growing it out and she wants to do natural. She might, she might do locks. Um, yeah, she's black. She's beautiful. She's just like a year older than I am. You would think she's way younger and she just lost like 115 pounds. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, that's amazing. Um, but she's growing her hair out. So she's wearing head wraps. I went to go do a little, just like an impromptu conference with her just because uh, I had to, we had to go over some things quickly. It wasn't like a set meeting and she's like, I'm gonna leave my camera off. I've got my hair, you know, pulled up. And I'm like, Half the time my hair is in a ponytail. I said, you don't have to worry about any of that. We're not here to judge your hair. Just want to chat with you. She put it on. She got this beautiful head wrap on. And I'm like, really? Why would you hide that? That is gorgeous. <laughs> because I, I don't think I could pull off the head wrap. I think that somebody would be like, you're appropriating. It's like, no, I just think they're really pretty and I want to wear them. So I don't know. Maybe. I, I wear hats sometimes. So there is that. Waiting for it to cool off, though, before I can wear hats. Oh, I'm so tired of this heat and humidity. It's September. It should be Halloween season. Sweaters and hot cocoa and pumpkin spice things. Instead, I'm still in sleeveless dresses that are kind of short because it's still hot out um, and having to run AC all the time. Meh. The, the things of living in Georgia. I mean besides the political climate here. Rural North Georgia, if y'all know, you know, okay? Uh, as far as crochet goes, I have not gotten as much done this week as I would have hoped to have done. Um, I did finish this up, but I have not weaved in the ends yet. Little face cloths. I make these for myself because I've never done any kind of crafty thing where I've sold anything. Um, this is just like the perfect size to give your face a good scrub at night, you know, when you're cleaning things off, you don't need a humongous washcloth, right? This is just moss stitch and then a border around in half double. That's it. And this is 
the, I think pretty sure this is the premier just cotton. I'm not sure. I have a bunch of it that doesn't have labels anymore because it's been, you know, tossed around so much. But this is something that I like to grab this particular bag when I'm going in the Twix someplace, and I know we're going to be riding for a while, um, so that I, I keep a pair of scissors in here, a pair of these. Y'all, if you don't know about these, school supply section. Yeah, they're little, but the, this part actually fits my hand well enough. The cover on it is an eraser, which isn't necessary, but it keeps it covered, so nothing's going to get harmed in your bag when you can just toss it in the bag. And they're less than $2 a pair. I mean, do I know this? Yes, I do, because I have more over here for more bags that I put them in. I told you, it's all the supplies. You know what? This is an office supply, a school supply, and a crochet supply all in one. Bonus! <laughs> but these, I find, I find these at Walmart in the school supply section. Just in case you ever wonder about that, they are uh, super handy and helpful to have. But I had keep that. I keep a couple of crochet hooks. Oh, and I have started another one, apparently. That's right. I forgot about that. Um, riding around. We were on a sort of a long ride and it was daytime, so I just kind of crochet easy. Moss stitch, alternating colors, carrying it up in Premier Just Cotton. And this will be another one. I think it'll be a little smaller because I honestly don't really keep up with how big or small these things are. These are just for me. Um, and they work out really well. So that's in here with two colors. And I keep some of that scrubby in here as well. This is that sort of nylon scrubby because I need to make another one of these for a dear friend of mine. Um, I made one for her that was that with some of the cotton as well, kind of together and made it super long because she has some mobility issues with her shoulders. So that in the shower, she can kind of scrub her back with it being really long and not having to lift her arms up over her head to do it or anything or reach too far behind her. She loved it. Only the kittens have decided it's their toy. They would go steal it out of the shower and carry it around the house. So another one needs to be made, either for her or for the cats. We're not sure which yet. But that is in this. And by the way, this really super cute bag. I had picked up from Ella, No Catchy Name Crochet, and it even has a cute little notions pouch that I have my yarns in for what I'm working on right now. Um, love it. She makes really great bags. Zipper, little handle, and this one's covered in cat fur because it lives in the living room. Of course it does. It's a living room. Anyway, um, but uh, Oscar <laughs> decided he wanted to lay on it. And I didn't realize that it was covered in Oscar fur until I picked it up and I had on a black skirt. You see where this is going. I was covered, covered in Oscar fur. So, yeah, I just heard a meow in the other room. So there's that. A little more crochet. The temperature blanket is moving right along. Uh, this is the most recent strip of 19. Look, my nine doesn't look half bad, does it? I'm kind of proud of myself. I'm getting better at the numbers. Maybe by the time I get to the end of the year, I'll be really good at putting numbers on. Uh, but I just made it a totally different color so it would stand out because everything else has been super dark because that's my warmer colors, super dark. And the one that I sewed on, let's get down to the bottom of this guy. And yes, I do weave in all of my ends as I go on this. I have been very proud of myself for keeping up with it. The hubby's even proud of me. He's like, you have kept up with that. Even like, I'll fall like two or three days behind sometime, but they're so small you can catch right up, you know? And I do it all. Look at this. Look at that. Look at all the dark colors. You can see how warm it has been. But I love the white in between. The way it kind of defines it. Um, there will be a border around the outside. In case you're wondering, in case you're brand new here, my numbers were awful at the very beginning. They're getting better. This was 22 for the year 2022 and one for January. Um, and there's a couple of random squares in between to make all the numbers work because it's 19 squares across and it's going to be 20 rows long. Um, and it is getting there. I'm over halfway there. So it's going to be smaller than I thought it was because I did this out of three weight. This is Hobie Amigo. 
um, in just some various shades of blue and teal and purple. And the inner color is the low temperature. The outer color represents the high temperature for that day. That's it. That's all I'm doing for it. And I have a feeling I am going to do another temperature project uh, this next year because I have had so much fun with this. I don't know what I'll do. I might do something quite similar, but just in a different set of colors because why not? Maybe I'll do it in a four weight this time and make it bigger because this is going to be a lot smaller than I had anticipated. Not that that's a problem, but I was so worried that it was going to be just too enormous and huge. This, these are just little two round squares. That's it. Two round squares. So in a three weight, it's kind of small, but I'm having fun with it. I'm enjoying it. And even on days when I just, I don't know, I can't do anything. I'm having a crappy day. You know, if you have depression, you know what it's like sometimes. Even if you haven't really had a super crappy day, you feel like you've had a crappy day. If I can knock out a square, one square, one little baby square, okay? I have finished something. I've accomplished something. And sometimes when you have depression, that's important. You can say you, you just, even if you just accomplished that one thing, you can say to yourself, I did it. I finished a square. Remember that. By the way, if you're new here as well, welcome. I forgot to welcome everybody, but you know, phew, squirrel. Um, mental health is an open topic for discussion as it should be because mental health is health. And I have dealt with depression for a great bit of my life. Um, I have a whole bunch of letter diagnoses, which are fun, but one of the major ones is a chronic recurring major depressive disorder. Now it has been under pretty good control over the past year, year and a half or so, partially because I discovered a hobby that I could do that I, that really calms me, can calm my head and let go of some of that, the garbage when I'm doing it. And I just think it's super important that mental health care is accessible to everyone and that mental health is just not so stigmatized. Why would it be? I can talk about the fact that I have diabetes and I have to take six shots a day. Why can't I talk about the fact that I deal with depressive disorder and I take a medicine every day, right? What's the difference there? I still function like, well, mostly like an adult. I mean, I still say a lot of times I'm 12. At least my sense of humor is 12. Yeah. But anyway, to not get off on that tangent, let's go back to the crochet because there is one more thing that I did finish this week. I'm not even kidding. Um, my square for the hashtag rock2022AU uh, over at Judy at Witch Peace Craft, which she will be linked up there and down below. Um, basically twice a month, the first and the 15th of every month, she releases and shows you an album. You are to be inspired in some way by that album or by the songs or however you want to be inspired. Twice a month, you do your project. Now, I have chosen to do a square every time of this size in a corner to corner fashion, inspired by the colors of each album cover. This one was from Olivia Newton-John, Let Me Be There, because a little tribute to her, um, as she did pass, she finally lost her battle with breast cancer after so many years. Um, a lot of people were doing projects having to do with breast cancer research and support of, you know, that sort of thing. I decided to just stick with my album inspirations. And I will show a picture at the end of this and the, uh, the album cover so you can see where the colors came from. Mostly green. She's sort of laying on a field of grass, looking all pretty. It was from 1973, 74. Um, so, yeah. Always beautiful, Miss Olivia Newton-John. Um, have to remember her because she had a big influence on my childhood. I grew up watching Grease. I had the double album of Grease with her and John Travolta double album as in vinyl. I had that as a kid. Um, also Xanadu, when she did that movie, it did not do well critically really or the box office, but 10 year old me loved it. I loved the song. She was on roller skates. It was just totally my jam. So yeah, 
get a chance to ever to look back and watch it. It could just be like a total throwback um, because it was like 79 or 80 when it came out. Totally within that era. Okay, let's just put it that way. But Olivia Newton-John was, of course, beautiful and, you know, just as she always had been. But yes, this was my square for that. That has been a fun make along for me. Um, I have a stack of squares now. I will eventually have 24 of them because we're doing two a month all year long. Then I will put them together and it will be an enormous um, sort of a stained glass square blanket. And even though a lot of the colors may not necessarily go together, a lot of them repeat. Like this yellow is in a bunch of different squares. Um, this green is only in two so far. This orange has been in a couple so far. So they're related to each other. They won't be matchy-matchy at all, but it won't be so discordant to your vision when you look at it because they all will be in this sort of corner-to-corner -corner fashion, all bordered by black. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to putting that together. I don't know what I'm going to do with the blanket when I'm done with it. It's going to be huge, but... It's been a fun make along you know, to have something to challenge myself with every two weeks because it's like the last minute I'm going, I didn't do my square. Oh, no. Yeah, because that happens to me a lot. All right. Toss that over to the pile on the bed. I think that's everything today. I think my little Halloween kitty is still sitting here because I still have not decorated my office. When I'm done with work for the day, I've been now instead of working 12 hour days, I've been working about 7.45 till about 5.30. Yes, that's more than 40 hours a week. However, it's better than I was doing. So I'm doing that. And when I'm done, I walk away from the office and I don't stick around and do other things in there, like take care of my decorations that I want to do and stuff like that. So that still has to get taken care of. And it will. It will. What else do I have over here that might be interesting that I've forgotten to talk about because that does happen? I don't even know. I don't know if you can see that from up there. I've got a sparkly skull up there because, of course, I do. You know, me with my crazy skull fascination. Dia de los Muertos is like my favorite. Anyhow, what are you doing this week? Has everybody gone back to school that goes to school in your family yet? They went back to school here at the beginning of August. Whoa. Yeah, the times have changed. Times have definitely changed. Um, speaking of back to school, I did host the Yarnivores monthly theme uh, month last month, and that was back to school. And I appreciate everybody for participating with that. That was a lot of fun. Got a lot of cool entries. Uh, the video for the winning thing was up uh, earlier this week. So that was taken care of. The prize has already been given. It's like, whoa, we are quick on the ball here. <laughs> And I do appreciate y'all taking part in anything we do in the yarning community. It's a big community. It's a lot of fun. I've been missing out on all the lives lately and missing out on other people's videos because while I'm working, I the nature of what I'm doing now involves me having to actually talk to people more. So I can't have the videos running. Usually I would have videos running and just kind of, you know, watch with one eye and work with the other. You know, does that make sense? And I really can't do that as much now. I've got to figure out my rhythm so that I can get more videos watched again. Because, yeah, I, I miss everybody. I really do. Because it's always a good time. So, what are you doing this week? I'm off Monday. I'm not sure what I'm doing with that day. Hopefully, I'll be recording some stinking videos because I really need to. Um, and beyond that, maybe some extra crochet. Gosh, I hope so. I miss it. Of course, I'll probably end up going shopping instead. Yeah, that, that's a thing. That's really a thing. <laughs> Thank you for coming by. There will be a little video here at the end and maybe a slideshow. I'm not sure. Oscar's not in here. I know you haven't seen him yet, so I've got to at least get a picture of him. He's out running around the house someplace. And um, I'm going to go outside and see what all this rain has done to my plants. Hmm. I know I have at least one tomato to harvest, maybe more. So, yeah, I'll take a little video of that. See you very soon. Thanks again for coming by. Hit like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff if you would. Leave me a comment down below and I'll see you very, very soon. Okay, heading out the door now. See that a home without a cat is just a house. Indeed. Unlocking the door and stepping outside. 
you can see, yep, the mower has not been moved or touched because deal, it's been too hot. Um, there was, oh, there are still some remnants of spider webs. Ooh, there's a, there's a spider right over there. I may have to go take a video of it. The rain seems to have stopped for the moment. Do you see that path of wetness down there? That was running like a river earlier when we were having flooding conditions. And there's the twuck sitting there all nice and happy. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get that spider in a good view because it would mean walking through this, which needs to be bush hogged again. Ooh, and that's very wet down there. Oh, wow. She's gotten big. Yes, I don't mind taking videos of spiders. I let the spiders kind of hang out and stay. Oh, trying to, there you go. You can see it a little bit. Um, they take care of bugs and they're just garden weaving spiders. So yeah, looking down here, all oh, these weeds are trying to encroach on my little doohickey here. I love these sweet little teeny tiny white flowers. They're so cute. The little blue ones as well. The orange ones have died down, which I don't know why. I don't know anything about them. Uh, this is going to have some more ahi dulce peppers. There's a lot of little buds on there. I'm kind of excited about that because I ate one of the peppers. It was very nice and sweet. But yeah, ahi dulce pepper is really cool. This is my sad little cucumber plant, which got really ignored. And that's why these leaves look like this. But look, look, it's a cucumber. What? Yeah, I got to take that off. Um, I thought there was another one on here, but it may be gone. But there's a blossom, so maybe I'll have another cucumber. And I will never again use these potting things for starting seeds. They don't disintegrate like they say they're supposed to. Oh, look. Little bugs. Could be stink bugs. The big one looks like a stink bug. The little one really does not. I don't know what that is. But they're all over this plant. What the what? This is my um, Brazilian starfish red plant. See, it's kind of growing there. They have interesting shapes and I have already eaten one of the peppers. They're quite yummy. Here is a tomato that could probably go another day. Here's another Brazilian starfish red. It still needs to wait a little bit. It's not completely um, red yet. Sorry about all the movement. I keep walking into things and webs and everything else because there are spiders over here too. These two little guys are still growing. Happy for that. Oh, there's my red guy. This one I should have pulled yesterday. Yeah. That's the, I think that's the biggest tomato I've had so far. <laughs> I know that's sad. Uh, this one does not have any active tomatoes that I can see. Okay. See, I have way too many plants in there. I didn't know. I didn't know. I'm new at this. Love that. I'm a little decorative one there. This one, I think I pulled what was active on it and going recently. This one I've left there. It has an issue on the bottom. I just left it. I figure what the heck. Let it live its best life, right? No more. This is my only red tomato right now. That's kind of sad. A lot of basil. I've pretty much let the basil just do what it's doing. It's helping to keep some bugs away because some of the bugs that like tomatoes don't like it. Oh, there's another couple of... Look, look, look. Can I even get the camera down there? See? Little tiny mater. So yeah, they hide in there. A lot of times I can't see them until they turn red because they just blend right in. But there's that. And the, those pots have turned out to be disappointments. You see all the water in that one? They don't drain. They're supposed to drain. They don't drain. So that has been a problem. Um, as far as the rest, it is starting to rain again. I'll let you see some tree action out here. The cedars and the pines. The cedars are very big and pretty. That, I don't know what it is. Somebody said one time said it was a sweet gum. Somebody said it was a maple. I don't think it's a maple. 
um, in-laws house up there and a lot more woods we just have a little house out in the woods there's part of my driveway oh wow it really got washed out this morning and last night good grief we have storage units containers out there the one on the right belongs to my brother-in-law the one on the left is ours i think we just need to clear it out and get rid of everything that's in there because it got wet in there so things are moldy and i'm like ew i don't want to deal um before it starts to rain too hard let's see if i can uh, luckily we still have some gravel good grief boy that's a mess but it was raining really hard this morning We've got a whole house generator runs on propane propane tanks in the backyard This is another part of the backyard. Yes, we have storage under there. I need to come out here and mow my goodness. Look at all this It's getting really tall but That's where I play with my plants up there on that porch That's my sliding door back there. We have a nice little back porch area. Actually, it's a big back porch area But yeah, this is my little house in the woods the driveway continues down the road is way down there but I'm going to turn around so I don't get too soaking wet out here in the rain and come back up. And this is what it's like to live out in the woods. <laughs> you can actually hear birds and stuff in the trees. I don't know if it's coming across on the video or not. But lots and lots of trees and stuff. There are a few paths through there, but I generally don't go out there much because ticks and things like that. I'll keep with my indoor life. Oh, look. You can see the water flowing. Washing more of my driveway away. Yep. That's a problem. As I walk through it. Good grief, I'm stupid. <laughs> Not going to show you my license plate, but uh, I will show you this side of the truck. See? Truck. It's cute. All that rain. And look at all the, the mud and dirt that's still on the side of it. it. Needs to be washed. Not happening today. It is just way too yucky outside. But I'm going back in because, well, it is time for that. I'm going to go in with my tomato. And I don't think I'll make a tomato sandwich right now. But uh, when I have a pepper that's ready tomorrow, yep, I will chop the two of them up together and eat them together because that will be nice. Thank you for coming by. Got to find the Oscar and see if I can take a little picture of him. <laughs> Bye.